Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, I know I've been off and not doing a lot of posting lately. It's just been really busy with, you know, Christmas, the kids being off school. Um, I spent the two weeks before Christmas, I went to my mom's place and spent a week there. And that was the week that my husband was off of work. So then when I got back home the next day, the kids were at school um, for two days. And then my husband went back to work and then the kids have been off. So it's just been really busy and hard to just keep up with the filming and everything. So now it is December 29th. It's a Sunday. My husband just got back from doing PowerPoint at the church. Be there all day for like four and a half hours, four hours, something like that. So me and the kids didn't end up getting to go. That's the problem with only having one vehicle. And now we just have our one minivan. So and for the most part, it's okay. It works. It's fine. But sometimes there's just, um, we're both doing different things in different directions. And that, those are the few days that we wish we had another vehicle. But that's okay. I watch church online while dealing with the kids fighting over their Lego. But I told my husband when he got home if I could have just a few minutes to do this quick video. Um, I think this is going to be my last video of the year. And then I'm going to set up and hopefully film a bunch more and have videos at least once a week for 2020 and uh my cat just jumped up on the bed where you're propped up on the bed my cat just jumped up and he's staring at me so uh anyways i just want to do a quick little like book haul end of the year beginning of the year um plans reads things like that um last year for the first time i signed up for secret santa through the reddit gifts and I got, this year, I got this beautiful little necklace that says, Life, um, Life Breaks Free. Anyways, it says, Life Breaks Free. The person who did my Secret Santa sent me a message online and asked me if I had any quotes, favorite quotes or sayings or anything like that. And I gave her, like, four different sayings. So this one is more, it's part of the same quote that says, Life Finds a Way. But she picked the Life Breaks Free part, which is fine uh it's in jurassic park the book which i read a couple of years ago um i just i've always liked jurassic park the movie and so i was like why would i want to read a book about dinosaurs but i wanted to try it out so i got it was part of the two for 15 deal so i got both the jurassic park and the lost world and I fell in love with this book. Look, I made my husband read it. I don't know what that is, like hot chocolate or coffee or something. And I don't know if that was me or my husband or the kids, probably. I think that was me in the van. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, I loved this book. And I, I was told my husband, like, he doesn't do a lot of reading. But I was like, you need to read this book. And I, like, forced him to read it. And then um, the first Jurassic Park is better than the Lost World and the third Jurassic Park movie. And I also like the Jurassic World movies, but really you're not going into a Jurassic, like a dinosaur movie because it's got like this amazing plot. You're going into it to watch dinosaurs, really. Um, but I think the new Jurassic World movies had a decent story to them. Got my sticker off. Enough to keep you interested, I guess, but really it was about the dinosaurs. Anyways, a lot of people think that the scientist in this, the, um, like, biologist, the movie is really dumb. She's the one that, like, grabs the baby T-Rex and tries to, like, save it. And she's got blood on her jacket that she keeps wearing everywhere. And, of course, the mom T-Rex and the dad T-Rex, I think, are, like, chasing her and wanting to kill her. <laughs> Because she took their baby and everyone's like, she's so dumb. Like, this is her job. She's a scientist. She knows, like, she deals with animals in the wild all the time. She knows how they track and things like that. Why would she wear her jacket? She's not stupid in this book. She's She doesn't even want to save, like, the T-Rex in this book. Like, the baby one that gets injured, it's somebody else who feels bad. And she's like, what are you doing? You can't do this. The mom's going to find it and chase us down. So, like, I'm so happy that... This book is a lot better than the movie, and the plots and the storylines in these books are actually really good. And, um, more just scenes with dinosaurs, obviously, in it, but I don't know. I found it really well written, and I didn't mean to sit here talking about it, but 
Anyways, the quote is from Ian Malcolm. And uh, I just recently bought uh, Michael Crichton because I really enjoyed these books and I never read Michael Crichton before. So I think I put that in a different haul, but I have at least one more. It's called Next Michael Crichton book, so I'm hoping to pick those up in the new year. Anyways, so my book haul. I went to my mom's place for seven days. I arrived Tuesday and I left Tuesday. No, I left Monday. So I, I got there Tuesday night and I left Monday morning. And um, I just discovered that they have a bookstore by my mom's place. I typed in, she lives in Port Coquitlam, and I typed in bookstores in Port Coquitlam. And this bookstore popped up and it's like a five minute drive from my mom's house. And I'm like, mom, there's a bookstore here. And she's like, yeah, it's by the Safeway in this little corner, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you've known about this this whole time. She's lived in that apartment like nine years. I don't know how long the bookstore has been there. But she's like, yeah, there's a bookstore there. And I'm like... And it's kind of because I've been in that parking lot, in that um, area a lot. There's a McDonald's, there's uh, shoppers that we've gone to, there's a dog store, like a pet store that we've been to, the Safeway I've been to lots. I've been in that area a lot, but it's kind of like down like a side. There's like the Safeway here and then there's like a little alley and it's kind of in this area and beside it there's like a paint store or something. So it's not really something you would notice unless you know it's there. So I'm like, seriously, mom, how could you go this long and not tell me there's this bookstore? And I really like it because it's actually um, a used and new bookstore. So I thought that was really fun. Um, I got, when I was in Nelson, BC in August, we went to, a, I went to another bookstore called Otter Books and I got a bag and a pin from them. This one, and I did a haul for it. So I got my Otter book. Um you ought to be reading so that was a a new bookstore like new books and then i bought the book club bff pin from there and um got a pin for my friend as well so at this bookstore called western sky books i decided to buy their bag they had a few other bags that might have like a cuter saying or something on them but i wanted one that had their name on it like this one so then i can remember where i got it from and so um, it's just like a plain tote bag with their name with a woman reading on it. So uh, she said if you buy this then you get one of their pins for free that they make and I guess sometimes they get some really ratty old books that aren't really well for you can't really read them. So I got I picked this pin and it's kind of I don't even know what it's from but uh, I picked it because of a cow my husband shared a uh, a meme on my Facebook about like the first time you see cows versus like the 8,000th time you see cows and how you're like so excited to see cows. It's just kind of like an inside running joke with us about me and cows. <laughs> um, anyways, so I went to that bookstore and bought books, obviously. But first of all, I mentioned how I got a gift card for my birthday. My husband got me a gift card of $25, and then uh, a couple of friends of mine also got me a gift card for $25. So I bought some books, obviously. The other book I'm just gonna grab. Um, anyways, they, again, the two for $15. I got um, The Silent Wife from Chapters. Uh, I was just scrolling through the all the books that say two for 15 so this one sounded interesting and the little tagline is would you risk everything for the man you loved even if you knew he'd done something terrible and that's by carrie fisher i don't think i've read any carrie fisher before um for a family held together by lies the truth will come at a devastating price so i'm sure it'll be a good decent thriller mystery kind of book and then they say never judge a book by its cover but I saw this book on the ferry when I was in BC back in April, and I didn't buy it then, but it had a Great Dane on the cover, and I love Great Danes. I've loved Great Danes for a long time, and I've wanted a Great Dane. I know they're, I know they're good dogs to own. I know that they're, if any dog can be good if you train it well, but I know, like, they're fairly easy dogs, um, very lovable dogs. They, they're just very big, but they don't need necessarily a lot of space they're not like a farm dog you don't need acres of space just because it's a big dog 
uh, as long as you're willing to exercise them and walk them and stuff. And we have a decently sized backyard with a fence and stuff, but my biggest concern with Great Danes is they only live on average seven years. They're very big and they have a lot of heart problems and that can be very expensive and we don't have the money for that in our budget right now for such a big large dog. But I love them and they're amazing and this book The Guardian by Nicholas Sparks is about a wife whose husband passes away and his last gift to her is some letters I guess that he wrote her and a puppy Great Dane so I was like I don't even care what the book's about I just want to read it and I've read Nicholas Sparks before and I like him I haven't read him in a long time um but he's just you know everyone knows Nicholas Sparks romance um the walk to remember things like that so i know that i like nicholas sparks and he'll be an easy read and it was the two for 15 so i got it with the cute little great dane i actually have a picture of myself hanging up just behind me here or in front of me um, of myself with a great dane on my wedding day hold on so this is how much i love great danes i um saw when i before i got married i was flipping through some wedding magazines and I saw a picture of this lady standing on the stairs with this big, beautiful white wedding dress on. And she's standing there with a Great Dane beside her. And it's like the tuxedo colors where he's black with the white chest. And um, I was like, I want that picture. But I don't want a Great Dane. And if I did, um, I prefer the Harlequin colors, more the patchy, like two, three different colors. But if you just give me a Great Dane, I don't care what color it is. It can be all black. I don't care. But <laughs> I prefer the Harlequin colors on dogs um but this is like the tuxedo so it looks nice for the for the wedding photo right but i was like i don't have a great dane and i don't know anyone who owns a great dane and then on our wedding day after lunch we were going to take some pictures in this neighborhood and i was just thinking like it would be so nice to get this picture with the great dane and this lady walked by just after that thought went through my head this lady lady walked by with her great dane he was black and white with the tuxedo colors. His name was Boots because he has white socks on his feet. And like white, not actual socks, <laughs> the white pattern on his feet. And I chased her down in my wedding dress and I was like, excuse me, crazy white wedding dress lady. Can I please get a picture with your Great Dane? And she came by and we got a couple pictures. So it wasn't on the stairs exactly, but and my dad actually lives close to that neighborhood. And he said, you know, they, they walk by there all the time. So... But that's the picture of me and Boots. So, and my dad would see him occasionally after the wedding as well. But I live on average seven years and we've been married nine and a half. So sadly, this dog is probably not around anymore. But that was my sweet, sweet picture with the Great Dane. So hence, and it kind of matches the one on there. So I'm so excited. And it even has the socks and the white chest and the white face. So it could be the same dog. How um, much I love Great Danes. So I went to the used bookstore, used new bookstore, and I have been looking for The Outsiders, the Essie Hinton book that I read in school that I really enjoyed, and I haven't been able to find it at a used bookstore since, um, but I wanted to reread it. I've been finding that like all these classic books that you read as a kid or preteen teenager, kind of grades six, seven, eight, nine. They're good books, but you don't really understand them at that age. You don't really comprehend them, or at least for me, you don't. So it's nice to go back through. Like, I want to reread. Like, my husband and I are still reading 1984, which we started at the beginning of November, and it's driving me crazy. And that's my goal is to finish that by the end of the year. So I got, like, two days to read. Um, we read Animal Farm in school, so I'd like to reread that. I want to read the book which she didn't have, but it's called... It's about the massacre in Tiananmen Square. There's like a kid from Toronto or something and he goes to China and he's dealing with... It's all during that time, the Tiananmen Square thing. A Forbidden City. And I haven't been able to find that one and she sadly didn't have it. But she did have The Outsiders. And there was an anniversary edition that she had and then this like old school edition with the blue covers. So I could have brought the brand new one but I just liked the idea of having like an old copy with the cool blue covers or the pages and um, it's in fairly good shape. Like it's got this little rip here, but beyond that. And it was $5. I decided to read that in the new year as well. And um, what else did I get? So I bought, I've been looking for this 
This one I got at the thrift store, actually, at the Salvation Army, The Time Traveler's Wife. I've been looking to read this one for a while, so I saw it there for $2.99. Thought I'd buy it. Um, again, I don't even know, like, what a lot of these are. I've read the synopsis for them so long ago, and I was like, that sounds interesting. And then I forget about it. And then I find it and buy it, because it's cheap. I first became Christian. Yeah, I was a Christian. And I started dating, and I was dating my husband, and his family and in-laws and stuff were Christians. So they were talking about this author who's a Christian, um, Frank Peretti. And he writes kind of, not horror, but they are a little bit scary, I guess. Books that I wouldn't normally gravitate towards. But oh, there's a $5 sticker on it. He read this series called Piercing the Darkness and This Present Darkness that I read and I loved and I want to reread them. They're a little bit thicker so it's hard for me to go back and reread a book that's so big and intense when I have so many other books to read. But there was another book called Prophet that I've been waiting for for a long time and haven't found it anywhere and I found it at Western Sky Books for $4. Um, but I'm excited. I don't think, I thought I heard somewhere that it was like the prequel to the Present Darkness ones, but I don't think it actually is. But now that I have it, I'm excited to read it, so I'm debating if I should read these ones as well, but I may or may not, depending on how I feel. They're all like the same size. But I'm so excited that I found this book, and for only $4, because I think I have it online at Chapters or something, and it's like 20 something dollars. I'll read you the little synopsis because like I said they are Christian based but they're not I want to say it's a little more subtle I think like if you know it's Christian based you pick up on all the stuff or if you know religion in general even if you're not a Christian you would pick up on it but it's not necessarily like praising God in church kind of it's just a novel with the themes and morals and values of scripture in it but it says, John Barrett, anchorman for News 6 at 5, the city's most watched newscast has a problem. His comfortable, successful world is being jarred to the breaking point. He's caught his producer skewing a story to fit her own prejudices, then lying to cover her tracks. And she appears to be hiding something much bigger. Her, his father's accidental death suddenly isn't looking so accidental. Carl, his estranged son, has returned to challenge his integrity and probe to find the man behind the TV image. The supposedly professional and objective newsroom is now divided and fighting over truth. And what are these mysterious voices Barrett, Barrett is hearing? The storyteller Frank Peretti has woven a prophetic tale for our times. Prophet carries all the hallmarks of Frank's blockbusting fiction. Plenty of edge-of-the-seat action, nail-biting suspense, breakneck pacing, and blow your blow you out of the water a spiritual impact. But more than this, it penetrates to the very heart of a vast struggle that threatens to tear our society to pieces and sh the struggle over which vision of moral authority will define our nation. So it sounds intriguing. Um, I have another Frank Peretti back here, The Oath. It's another, like, I think he writes a lot of big books apparently. Um, this is, like, really old and falling apart as well. It's all, like, taped. I don't even remember where I got them from. If my sister-in-law gave them to me, or if I, she mentioned them and I bought them, or my mother-in-law gave them to me. This one's about something evil at work in, High, in Hyde River. Uh, under the cover of darkness, it strikes without warning, taking life in the most chilling and savage, savage fashion. The latest victim, nature photographer Cliff Benson, was brutally brutally killed while camping in the mountains. So, yeah, they're trying to find this mysterious thing that's killing people in the town. So, they're pretty intense books, even though they're, like, Christian. It's kind of Christian music. It's just defined by who's writing it and the morals and stuff are, and they might not have more explicit scenes in them, or they, they may or may not. But I find that even like the Christian books can be pretty intense and um, good thrillers and stuff. And you can find any genre, like romance, mystery, thriller, whatever your genre is, you can find it in Christian books. Well, and I've been reading, I don't just read Christian authors, obviously. I'm like Nicholas Sparks and The Silent Wife, Carrie Fisher. I don't know, like, I can't say who is and isn't a Christian unless I know for sure, but... 
Um, I, I read a lot of books, but I'm excited to get more, again, like, right, Rita Frank Peretti and stuff that I read, <clears throat> that I've read those books, like, 10 years ago. So I'm excited to get back in and try reading those again. Anyways, back to, sorry for the change of lighting and stuff like that. Um, my phone died, well, my phone didn't die, but the space ran out and I had, like, 18 seconds left. Of film time so I had to stop recording go and figure out how to make space on my phone get my husband to move where everything is saved on the phone and um, yeah so and I've spent the last couple hours taking the videos off of my phone putting them on the computer and editing a video that I have of me and the kids reading some Christmas Eve books. It takes a lot of time and I'm basically just cutting out gaps of blank space like pauses and speeding up parts so you have the um, sped up like reading parts of it. Anyways it's taking me a very long time and I've, I'm here. <laughs> I've Tasked my husband with finding some kind of Christmassy music to add to the sped up parts. So you're not just hearing us speak like chickmunks. Anyways, I wanted to finish my little book haul from my mom's place at the Western Sky Books. And I saw Zoe Reads on Twitter and Instagram posting about reading A Boy Called Christmas. And she said she really enjoyed it. And I just love this cover. I love the... Um, the art of it, the style of it. This is, it's just blank on the inside. It's kind of like a um, silvery kind of shiny writing. And I just find the book very beautiful. And because it was $6.95, I just had, I just knew I had to pick it up. And they also had The Girl Who Saved Christmas. So my question is, this is a boy a boy called Christmas. So is she saving the boy or is she saving the holiday? But they were both $6.95 at this used bookstore, used new bookstore. And they're just so pretty. Like, I just love them. I didn't have a chance to read them this Christmas, but I'll probably read them next Christmas. I don't usually read Christmas books after December. Like, I kind of read them in November, December time. But... I mean, you can read them any time of year you want, obviously, but I think I'll just save them for next year and maybe read them with the kids. I'm not sure what, like, age this is for, specifically specifically for little kids or not. It doesn't say. It says kids fiction on the sticker price. So I'll probably read it with the kids. So on this cover, he's like dressed up as Santa, but on the back it says that, like it's showing that he also wrote A Boy Called Christmas and he's writing the reindeer in that one. I kind of like both covers, but what would be cool about this one is the moon here and then the moon here, which is shiny. But, um, that's okay. I like them, they're very pretty. And I am excited to get to them next Christmas. This one's red and green. So that was like my little mini haul I spent. I remember when I went to the Otter Books in Nelson, BC, I spent around $70, $80, like $78 or something like that. And then um, this time I spent like $38, so not even quite $40. Bucks, so I did better. There we go. I did a little bit better that time. This time. I'm still reading 1984. And I want to finish it for the new year. I want to start the new year off fresh. No books held over. It's taking me... Excuse me. It's taking me so long because I'm supposed to be reading it with my husband. And we were listening to it. And then I was away for a week. And when I came back, I re-downloaded the audio version. And then... We never got through it, and then it got returned back to the library, and somebody else has it out, and it's just constantly trying to find the time. Um, again, we have three kids, and normally, like, if it takes us, which I hate doing because then it really breaks up the story a lot, but even if it takes us three months to listen to a book, whatever, but now it's the end of the year and I want to get it done. 
So, um, I'm on part two, chapter eight. So I got, I still have a bit of a chunk left to read in the next, because today's the 29th, so in two days. So hopefully I get some time to do that. Um, I had a little tiny skinny bookmark in it, and I don't know where it went, but I found this note from my daughter. I love you, my mommy, love Sophie. So I'm using that as my bookmark right now. And my husband has like the ebook version that he's reading. So the last book I finished that I wanted to get done before, again, like finish it off for the new year, is One Day in December. And I, I picked this up because a few people on BookTube had mentioned it. And Gabby Reads was talking about it. And she mentioned how it isn't, like you go into it and you think like One Day in December. So you know that they meet like... She's sitting on the bus and she sees this guy and their eyes lock and it's like love at first sight kind of thing. And you think like it's going to take place in December, but it doesn't. It actually takes place over it like it starts December 21st, 2008. Yeah, 2008. And it goes up to 2017. I know it's at least seven years. Yeah, 2017. So... But it was good. It jumped quite a bit. Like some, it would jump by days. So it starts like December 21st and then it would be like December 22nd. And then at the beginning of every year she has her New Year's resolutions. But it would really skip, like you might get five days out of the whole year of the story. But it is covering nine years. So it did move. Like I think the pacing was pretty good. It wasn't it it did move fast because you're skipping it's like january march july september december and then new year's resolutions and then april so it does jump quickly but it did keep the, it kept it from getting too long and dragging on you're like okay i just want to get to the end of the story like it is covering nine years liked it um i'm really glad i'm i want to do no spoilers obviously but the two people that you want to get together from the beginning of the book, you know, all this stuff happens. So they're not in a relationship at the very beginning. And throughout the whole book, you wonder, are they going to get together? Are they going to get together? Are they going to get together? But they're, they end up with different people at some points. And it's just like, it's never the right timing for them. And what I really appreciate that happened in this book is there was no cheating on their parts. There was um little not really a spoiler but they do kiss at one point and he's dating somebody else but like that's it it was one kiss and they both said like let's pretend this never happened let's move on and just we're friends kind of thing but they don't they're not actively like together they don't get together or anything like that with while well, they're committed to other people so I really appreciate that, even though there could be lots of ways to justify them having an affair because just their emotions, they're good friends, they've been together for, they, like, they've been friends for such a long time, blah, 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 all this stuff, but they don't. They're, they're faithful to who they're with, and they are just really good friends for the majority of this book. So I really do appreciate that aspect of it. And you also get his perspective, not just her perspective. So I know it's written by a woman, Josie Silver. So I don't know how much research she did about how men think. It's definitely the man, the, the things that he's thinking and feeling and how he's expressing himself like in his own thoughts is probably more how a woman thinks and processes. But I still feel like it's what we as women... Not all women, obviously, I can't speak for everybody, but it's how we kind of, we always want to know what does the guy that we like, the guy that we're having a crush on, what does he think? Is he thinking about me the same way I'm thinking about him? Things like that. So, um, I, I like that we get the male perspective. Sorry, I have a light here and I'm trying to see if I can get it. My eyes are in like this crazy deep shadow, but it's broken. It's not really that dark <laughs> but yeah we get like his perspective and you see that he actually does love her and that he does think about her and he cares about her and over the years like they are 
really good friends and I like that you get his perspective even if it is like mushy gushy girly <laughs> vibes about it I still like it and yeah and it's not just like the girl spending the whole time like does he love me does he does he love me does he love me not does he like me does he hate me like picking the the flower petals right it's not just her wondering the whole time he she's like you're getting you're or the as the reader you're not wondering the whole time you're getting both perspectives and I like that I'm also listening to Little Women on audiobook and I have about an hour and a half left and I want to finish it today Sunday and I want to finish it before Tuesday and go to the movie. Tuesday is New Year's Eve and it's also a cheap day at the movie theater so I really want to do that. I read Little Women a long time ago and I don't remember most of it so I wanted to reread it and there was a book club, I'll post a link to it on Goodreads, that that was the pick of the month. For this month so I said okay that's my excuse to reread it but I decided to listen to it because it's such a big book and I knew it would take me a long time to get through those big classics really do take me a long time so it's been really fun listening to it um I'm enjoying it and yeah I'm excited to go see the movie and the remake I don't know I've probably watched one of the other movies before after I read the book but it's been a while so I wanted to do just a really quick what's like my TBR for January for the new year and I really don't have a set TBR yet. I was thinking a lot of people on booktube do TBR at the beginning of the month so you'd have like January 1st you'd release your TBR for January and then January 31st you would release your wrap up but for me it seems like a lot of it's not it is and isn't repetitive you are talking about the same books but at the beginning of the month you're just saying this is what I want to read and at the end of the month you're talking about what you actually did get through and then what those books are like how if you like them what they're about all that stuff but I was thinking instead of doing two different videos I would just do wrap up and TBR videos so at the end slash beginning of the month you'll get my wrap up for the month and then my TBR for the following month but right now I don't have a set TBR for all of January yet but I did, a couple years ago, my pastor did a series at church and it went through, it's like AA, it's Celebrate Recovery, I believe. I'm just trying to see when this book was copyrighted. 1991. Did a series on Celebrate Recovery and how it is linked to our spiritual walk and our journey in life and how we can all use the tools for it and it's not like it's obviously geared towards alcohol and drug addiction and celebrating recovery from addiction but he was linking it to like the spiritual side of our life and just our relationships and stuff like that and the book he was basing it off of is a hunger for healing so by j keith miller and so I picked up this book and I meant to work through it a long time ago and I haven't. So this is what I want to do for 2020. I figured it's the beginning of the year and it's a good time to, you know, you a lot of people focus on their uh, resolutions, what they want to do, bettering themselves, eating healthy, going to gym, all that stuff. So this is one of the things I want to do to find healing spiritually, mentally, um, just in my life and in my relationships with family and friends and personal like with myself, things like that. I want a, a hunger for healing. So I'm excited to get to this and dive in and just, this isn't one that I might finish like in a week or two weeks or whatever. It is set by steps and 12 steps, chapter one, um, chapter two, step one, things like that. So this one will probably be one that covers uh, several weeks maybe even a couple months as I work I want to work through it as I read it instead of just reading the whole thing and then because I'll do that sometimes I'll read the whole book and then be like oh I'll go back through it and work through the the challenges or the questions or whatever they have in the book and then I do like one or two and then I give up so I want to work through this book starting January 1st so I'm excited to finally get to that and to work on myself and have better relationships in 2020 and I saw a preview for Dr. Doolittle with Robert Downey Jr. and it looks really good and I'm like strangely excited for it 
I told my husband that we need to watch the Eddie Murphy Dr. Doodle Doolittle with the kids. But this one looks really good. Like, just the animals look really amazing in it. And I love Robert Downey as Iron Man. So I'm excited to see him play in a different role after 11 years of watching him play Iron Man and following all the MCU movies. And I, um, back in August, when I was in, at my mom's again, I did a little mini book haul and I went to Value Village and they had some books there and I got three classics and I just read Frankenstein for Halloween and really surprisingly I loved it it was really good and I picked up also The Borrowers which is a movie I remember watching in school and the book I remember wa reading in school and then my kids really liked the story of Arietti so I want to read The Borrowers maybe with the kids we'll see it's hard to keep their attention on a book like that it is a classic book it's not like a picture book or anything but Obviously, I got, I happened to pick up the story of Dr. Doolittle with no intention of there being a movie, like, no idea that there was a movie coming out. So I want to read this starting January 1st, and we'll see the movie, I think, comes out January 17th. So I'm really excited about that. So these two books are the only things on my TBR so far, and my reading goals for 2020 are basically to read my bookshelves. This bookshelf has a couple books on it that I haven't read yet. Um, there's a couple at the top, like the Lost for Words bookshop. There's a Gillian Flynn Dark Dark Places. Yeah. Uh, Maria Shriver, I've been thinking. I haven't read yet. Uh, I talked about Profit is one I need to read. And then it's my other bookshelf in the living room. I'll do like a little mini bookshelf tour. But that's the bookshelf that I really need to read and has all of my books on it that I've bought recently. And that's my goal, is just to read the books I already own for 2020 and not to buy a whole bunch more books. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'm going to post this New Year's Eve. Hopefully I can get through the editing. That's my husband's last day off. So I'll spend some time tonight and stuff doing that. Anyways, thank you so much again for watching, for supporting my channel in 2019. And here's to a better, greater... 2020 um i have some videos that i'm thinking about working on got a schedule to actually film and post these videos at least once a week so again i hope that 2019 was good for you and if it wasn't i pray that 2020 is even better and may we move into the new year with good and no not good intentions May we move into 2020 with hope for a, a great year. And I'm at a complete loss for words. I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> Anyways, love you guys. Thank you again for watching. And I'll see you next year. Bye.